Hello everyone. Before we get started, I'd like to give a shout out to my members. Thank you for becoming a member and supporting the channel. Samuel Bassi, Maynell Wekwitz, Arnaldo Strasberg, Music Subic, and Cebu. I hope I said it right. Members are giving shout outs in my videos. You can easily become a member by clicking the join button. All right, let's get started. So in this video, we're going to be looking at two numbers. We're going to compare them. We have 7 to the 6th power and 6 to the 7th power. And we're going to find out which number is greater. Obviously, these are smaller numbers. You can easily evaluate the numerical values. But uh, I'm going to be presenting kind of like three approaches. We're going to be looking at two different graphs, two different functions. We're going to analyze them. And the third method is going to be a very different method at the end. All right, great. So let's get started. For my first method, I'm going to be comparing these two numbers, 7 to the 6 and 6 to the 7. So let's start with the first method. So suppose a equals 7 to the 6 and b equals 6 to the 7th. Now I would like to ln both of these values so that I can get rid of the exponents. So ln a would be ln 7 to the 6, which can be written as 6 ln 7. And ln b would be ln 6 to the 7th, which can be written as 7 ln 6. Great. Now, instead of comparing A and B, I'm going to be comparing ln A and ln B. How do you compare these? So here's what we're going to consider to be able to compare these two values. I'm going to consider the function f of x equals ln x over x. Obviously, this is defined for positive x values, right? And we're going to be looking at two different values here f of 6 and f of 7. Why? Because those are the bases. Are you going to see that those values are going to be helpful? So f of 6 is going to be ln 6 over 6, and f of 7 is going to be ln 7 over 7. So we, we want to find out which one is greater, but to understand that, let's go ahead and do a little bit of calculus, not too much, don't get scared. We're just going to do a little bit. So let's go ahead and differentiate this function to understand its behavior. On, a, on different intervals. So the derivative of this function, by the way, derivatives are easy, you just need to learn the rules. So the derivative of a quotient is just going to be the derivative of the top, which is 1 over x, multiplied by the bottom, minus the derivative of x, which is 1, multiplied by the top function, ln x, divided by x squared. x cancels out, we end up with 1 minus ln x over x squared, and I think we looked at this function before. I'm going to set it equal to 0, and from here I get ln x equals 1 and x equals e as my critical value. So we're going to make a table around that. Let's go ahead and take a look at our table. Our table is going to look like this. I'm going to have x on the top row, I'm going to have f prime, and I'm going to have f. And my critical value, x value, is going to be e, the Euler's number. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to look at the sign of the first derivative to the right of e and to the left of e. So what happens if x is greater than e? Then if x is greater than e, obviously 1 minus ln x is going to be negative because ln x is going to be greater than 1, right? So we have a negative value to the right and we have a positive value to the left. What happened to the denominator? Well, as long as x does not equal 0, which is not going to happen, uh, x squared is always going to be positive, so we don't have to worry about it. Now, the derivative, the sign of the first derivative, gives us a lot of good information about the function itself, and that is that the function is going to increase on this interval, which is negative infinity to e, and then decrease on the other interval, which means it has a maximum at e. If you evaluate the value, you're going to get that it has a max at e, comma 1 over e. So what is that supposed to mean? 6 and 7 are both greater than e. And let's go ahead and take a look at the graph and to get a better understanding. All right, so here's our graph of ln x over x. It's kind of hard to see, but this is the e comma 1 over e value where the graph has a maximum, which is kind of hard to see. It's not like a really bumpy maximum, but kind of like a maximum maximum. And then 6 and 7 basically are going to be on an interval where f of x is decreasing, which means f of 7, obviously, right? Look at this. is going to be less than f of 6. f of 7 is going to be less than f of 6. But what is f of 7? What, what is f of 6? f of 7 is ln 7 over 7. 
and f of 6 is ln 6 over 6. If you go ahead and cross multiply these, you're going to get 6 ln 7 is less than 7 ln 6. And then if you go ahead and move the powers back, you're going to get ln 6 to the 7th is greater than ln 7 to the 6. I just switched sides, so don't worry about it. It's, it's not hocus pocus. Now, notice that the lns are compared, but it's the same thing as the original numbers. This kind of shows us that 6 to the 7th is greater than 7 to the 6. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at our second approach. In the second approach, we're going to look at a different function. So let's go ahead and see how that works. We have a equals 7 to the 6 and b equals 6 to the 7. So I'm going to consider the following. How about raising a to the power 1 over 42? That's going to be 7 to the power 6 to the power 1 over 42. 6 and 42 cancel out. We're going to end up with 7 to the power 1 over 7. How about b to the power 1 over 42? That's going to be 6 to the 7 to the power 1 over 42. 7 and 40 goes into 42 six times, and this gives us 6 to the power 1 over 6. And as you can guess, we're going to be looking at a different function. Let's call that g of x, and that's going to be x to the power 1 over x. But in order to be able to differentiate this function, I'm going to ln both sides, and then bring the 1 over x down, and then write this as ln x over x. Does that look familiar? Yes, it's the same function that we looked at before, but this time it is the ln of g of x. Differentiate using the chain rule. Uh, you, this is kind of like the um, derivative of g divided by g itself, not the g prime by g prime, but g divide, prime divided by g is going to equal the derivative, as we've seen before, is going to be this one. And then you can go ahead and multiply both sides by g, which is x to the power 1 over x. So you end up getting the fun, uh, the following derivative for g. So this is the derivative, and when you set it equal to 0, you get the same x equals e value as before, and you're going to make a similar table. Let's go ahead and do that real quick. This is g prime and this is g. Our critical value is e, and our function, our function is going to be... So in this case, uh, we're going to have the same kind of behavior, of course, maximum and minimum, but this is going to be a different function. So in other words, if x is greater than e, our function is going to be decreasing. Obviously, x and uh, y values are going to be positive in this case, but we have a max at e, comma, e to the power 1 over e. Our y value is different. The x values are the same. So this means that g of x is decreasing on e to infinity, and 6 is greater than e. Of course, 7 is greater than e as well, because 7 is greater than 6. This means g of 7 is less than g of 6. And let me go ahead and show you what the other graph looks like. So this was the first graph. This is the second graph. So you, you notice that it's decreasing again, and g of 7 is less than g of 6. Now let's go back and see what the numerical values are. g of 7, g is x to the power 1 over x, so 7 to the power 1 over 7 is going to be less than 6 to the power 1 over 6. And then I'm just going to raise both sides to the power 42. And this is going to give us the following. When you raise both sides to the power 42, because everything is positive, it's not going to be a problem. What we're going to get 7 to the 6 is less than 6 to the 7th, which means the larger number we're looking for is 6 to the 7th power. All right, so 6 to the 7th power is greater. Let's go ahead and take a look at the third method. Now, for the third method, we'll totally use a different idea, and it's called the binomial theorem. So here's what it looks like. 7 to the 6 can be written as 6 plus 1 to the power 6. If you expand this using the binomial theorem, you're going to get something like this. 6 to the 6 plus 6 choose 1, 6 to the 5th, plus 6 choose 2, 6 to the 4th, plus 6 choose 3, 6 to the 3rd, plus 6 choose 4, 6 to the second, plus 6 choose 5, multiply by 6, and finally plus 1. Now notice that when you expand this, you're going to get the following. 6 to the 6 plus 6 times 6 to the 5th is 6 to the 6 again, and then plus 15 times 6 to the 4th, plus 20 times 6 to the 3rd, plus 15 times 6 squared, plus 6 squared plus 1. So I'm going to make groups here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 groups. I'm going to put these two together because th th those are small numbers. 6 squared plus 1 is 
37 and that's definitely less than 6 to the 6th power. So here's what I want you to notice. 15 times 6 to the 4th is less than 6 to the 6th because 15 is less than 6 squared. Makes sense? This is less than 6 to the 6th because 20 is less than 6 to the 3rd. So all of these numbers actually are less than 6 to the 6th and these two are equal so the total the total number here is going to be, because there are six groups, is going to be six less than six to the six times six, which is six to the seven. And if I put seven to the six on the left hand side, I get the same inequality as before, which shows us that six to the seventh power is the larger number. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.